علمنا ما اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين Today inshallah we will have uh, we will have a few words about an amazing hadith that shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, his mercy it shows his his way of giving is amazing Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يقول الله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى من شغله ذكري عن مسألتي أعطيته فوق ما أعطي السائلين. So the messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى صلى الله عليه وسلم the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said God who is blessed and exalted says to him who is so occupied with mentioning me, not making request of me, I will give the most excellent things I give to those who ask. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a continuous giver to his creatures. And uh, the creations are always enjoying the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and never takes from us. And this in itself um, gets us to continuously thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah likes uh, that uh, his servants ask him, and keep asking him. And uh, he, he likes his servants to keep making dua, requesting things from, from him. So if you, if you ask for uh, something, uh, let's say from a king, then he will assign an appointment for you just to meet you. And he will limit that meeting to certain minutes. And if he gets bored or if he does not like what you are meeting him for, he might end the meeting anytime. However, the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always open 24-7, 365 days a year. Always open. You can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime you want, day or night, morning or evening, midday or mid midnight. You can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime you want. You can raise your hands and start making the dua you want. You can ask him whatever you wish. And Allah will either answer your calls immediately or he will not answer your dua, but he will save them to, to, uh, to you. He will save them to you until the day of judgment. Or Allah will even lift an affliction that was about to happen to you. And that was because of your dua. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 186, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And when my servants ask you, O oh Muhammad, when they ask you concerning me, Indeed, I'm near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when, when he calls upon me. So let them respond. Let them respond to me by obedience and by believing in me. 
that they might be rightly guided. So the door of Allah is open. We have just to, to knock this door. We have to know when to knock this door. We have to know when to uh, uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah always, uh, he is always there. He is always there to answer our call. He, he's listening to us. We just ne need to, to start. We just need to initiate the, the uh, connection. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. So Allah, Allah's giving is not limited. Not only that, it's always, it's continuous. And the more you ask him, the more he has. The more he, the more he gives you, the more and more he can give. So whatever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's easy for him. It's just one word, two letters to fulfill your wish. Be, and it will be. So when you need something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just talk to him, ask him. Get up a little bit before Fajr prayer, before Fajr call for prayer. Make wudu. Pray to rakas and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one to distract you, no one to call you. You are with him alone and he is listening. Ask him, talk to him, tell him. So in this hadith, uh, actually when, uh, when, whenever we are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are practicing our servitude to him. So here in this hadith, Allah, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, to whom who is occupied with mentioning me? To whom who is occupied with mentioning me, not making request of me? So here, this is a higher maqam. A higher maqam than just asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone is occupied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone is occupied with mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the most excellent things he gives to those who ask. So this is a higher, a higher uh, maqam. A good example of this is when Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the hellfire. Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and he asked him, do you need anything? And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, from you? No. Allah knows my status. Allah knows where I am. And Allah knows what is happening. If he wants to save me, he can save me. It's easy for him. So he did not ask anything. He did not ask Jibreel for anything. So what happened? The, 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 the fire, we all know it's the fire is power. So when they wanted to throw Ibrahim in the fire, they could not come close to the fire as it was fiercely blazing. They had to use a catapult to a manjaniq to throw him. So this is the fire and this is the power of the fire. No one can control this, this power except the one who created it. 
And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah gave the order to the fire to be safe for Ibrahim and not to hurt him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 69, قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمِ So, Allah is saying, O oh fire, be coolness and safety upon Abraham. So what is this? He didn't say be coolness only because he might die of, uh, if, if the fire is so cold. And he, he did not say just safety. He combined them. He combined the two words, be coolness and safe for, for Ibrahim. So Sayyidina Ibrahim says, the best days of my life were the ones that I, I spent in the fire when they threw me in. This is strong belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was, Ibrahim alayhi salam was remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was doing dhikr. He was not caring about the blazing fire that he's thrown in. So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him way more than what he might ask for if he was thinking about it. The fire was blazing, but it did not hurt Ibrahim alayhi salam. The fire was safe for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the bad people got more crazy and angry when they saw Ibrahim السلام, walking out of the fire safely. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, another story, the water that people are drowned in was safe for Musa السلام, and his people when they were running away from Firaun and his soldiers. The water split in split and parted to be a safe route for Musa and his people. And that was the inspiration that was given to Musa السلام, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ يَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرَ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالْطَوْضِ الْعَظِيمِ This is Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayat 63. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Then we inspired to Musa, strike with your staff the sea. Strike with your staff the sea and it parted and each portion was like a great towering mountain so Musa and his people were saved while Pharaoh and his soldiers drowned it's the same water what ha what's happening the righteous people were saved while the evil ones drowned there so this is depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only by words, but practicing it. We always say, okay, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, uh, this is what, what happened is uh, uh, out of the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But something so and so. There's no but. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's will. Another, another story is the, uh, what happened to the uh, companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the, the, uh, uh, the battle that happened. They were... Uh, uh, the, uh, they were ordered to go back to collect themselves and to get ready to strike again. So what happened, some people came to them and those were the hypocrites. So what did they say? 
This is in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 173. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَا اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ To those to whom hypocrites said, so the hypocrites said to those believers, they said to them, indeed, the people have gathered against you. So fear them. So they are getting ready to destroy you all. They are getting ready to fight you and destroy you. But what happened to those companions, to those true companions, to those true believers? It merely increased them in faith. So these words made them stronger. They did not care. They did not, they did not fear those, the enemy. They did not get distracted by the words of the hypocrites. So they said, Sufficient for us is Allah, Hasbunallah. And He is the best disposer of affairs. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Complete dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was the result? Allah says in the next ayah, So they returned with favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They returned from favor, uh, uh, they returned with favor from Allah and bounty. No harm having touched them. But they gained the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they pursued the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what, what was concerning them. They wanted Allah to be pleased with them. They pursued the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them an order so they will fulfill it. They will, they will do whatever he, he is asking them because they know that this will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the possessor of good bounty. Allah will give great reward but there are some people who who are super proud and they 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 disdain Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't like to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Ghafir, Ayah 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ And your Lord says, call upon me. I will respond to you. Indeed, those who disdain my worship will enter hell fire. So they will be there. They will, they will enter hell fire. They will enter hell rendered contemptible. So just think about it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything will happen according to his will. And everything we believe will happen by his wish. Another narration for this hadith. 
سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ساس يقول الرب تبارك وتعالى من شغله القرآن عن ذكري ومسألتي أعطيته أفضل ما أعطي السائلين وفضل كلام الله على سائر الكلام كفضل الله على خلقه So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says God who is blessed and exalted says to him who is so occupied with the Quran as to neglect making mention of me and making request of me, I will give, and here making mention of me means uh, just making, uh, asking, asking and making dua, I will give the most excellent things I give to those who ask. The superiority of God's words over all words is like God's superiority over his creatures. So in, in this narration, it's a similar, a similar hadith with changing of few words here that some people are occupied with Quran. If they have, if what, whenever you see them, then they are reciting Quran. They are friends with, with the Quran. So they keep reciting the Quran. And the more they recite the Quran, the more they fell in love with the Quran. The more they recite the Quran, the more they understand the Quran. The more they read the Quran, the more light of the Quran would be on their faces, on their hearts. So the, the Quran is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The words of the Quran are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he Allah has revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel was so honest, delivering the message, delivering the words of Allah to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in turn, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so honest and careful to deliver this message, to deliver the Qur'an to the companions. So we have to, to have a strong relation with the Qur'an. We have to have a daily word of uh, Qur'an that we recite every day. So... If you if you are reciting the Quran and you you fell in love with reciting the Quran, it will be so hard to leave it one day. Your heart is connected. Your heart is attached to the Quran. So we have to read the Quran every day. We have to understand the Quran. We have to attend those um, uh, um, gatherings of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of remembering the Quran. And these gatherings will have special, uh, uh, special time for reciting the Quran and for explaining the Quran for, to, to, so that we will understand the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise those people who are sitting together remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading, reciting his, his book. He will be pleased with them. And he will mention them in, up in the uh, highest realm with, with, with the angels. 
with a group that is better than the group that they are with, with in, on earth. So we have to recite the Quran. We have to understand the Quran. And not only that, we have to implement what we are reciting. So this Quran is a complete system, is a complete program for our lives. Along the, along the whole time. So this Quran is suitable for all times, for all places. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he promised that this book, this Quran will be saved exactly as it was revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the day of judgment. No change will happen in the Quran. Not a word will be added, not a word will be omitted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, giving us a chance to get connected to him through his book. In the Quran, uh, uh, it is said, Inna nahnu nazzalna, nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. And this is Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 9, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this Quran, this Quran. And here it is, we revealed this remembrance. So remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his words. So reciting the Quran. So remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is reciting the Quran. And it is in Surah Al-Zukhruf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ it is just a way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you, Muhammad, and your people. So it's a big honor that it's, it's for us, for all people, for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So... And we all know that the Quran is in uh, is revealed in Arabic, so we have to pay attention to the language of the Quran. We have to learn the Arabic language so we can understand the Quran fully. It's an honor. It is an honor, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us in in the in his book everything that will happen in the future so in surah al-anbiya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying uh, in surah al-anbiya this is um, ayah number 1 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so the time of their account has approached. The time is has approached for the people while they are in needlessness, turning away. So no mention comes to them and you from their Lord except that they listen to it while they are at play. So people 
are in heedlessness. They are turning away from the Quran. And this is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a warning that we have to pay attention to. We have to recite the Quran. We have to have a connection with the Quran. All the uh, rules of our life is listed in the Quran. So when it is mentioned that the Quran is remembrance, then we are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we read his book. When we reflect on the ayahs that we are reading. So the Quran has light. And this light, when, when it gets into the heart, it is reflected on the, on the faces. And that's why on the day of judgment, we see There are radiant faces. They were obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were obedient to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We live in a time way after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we follow his path. And that's why every time we pray, we read Surah Al-Fatiha. In Surah Al-Fatiha we say, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ O oh Allah, guide us for the true path. And some, some narrations, some, some of the uh, uh, scholars explain this Sirat al-Mustaqeem by that this is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, get us connected with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is going to lead us on the right path. So, when we go back to the main thing that when we are connected to, to, to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our heart is filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This love will give us the strength to have complete Tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete uh, uh, confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the, the giver. So the biggest enemy for a human being, for man, is fear. Fear. He's afraid of the future. He's afraid of how to collect his rizq. He's afraid of how to uh, uh, prepare the future for his kids. He's afraid of everything. He's afraid of people. He's afraid of those who might mock him. He is afraid of, he's afraid of anything. So sometimes people are engaged in this dunya trying to collect as much as they can. So they are, they, they, this, this engagement in this dunya, vanishing dunya, will keep them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no time for worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. So we have to stop. 
we have to think again. We have to do our calculations one, one more time. How is our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, if we get ourselves on the scale now, if we weigh our deeds now, where are we? Are we ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If death angel came to us right now, are we ready to go to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't want to be of those people who are heedlessness, who, who are heedless. We want to be of those who, who are aware that death might come anytime. And we have to get ourselves prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya, then we know that we want to do everything that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be away from what makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unhappy with us. So the lesson here is, even if we are super busy during the day, we should always keep mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when we are working, driving, doing house chores, keep mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep doing istighfar. Keep sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep saying la ilaha illallah during the day. You are working. Okay, that's fine. You are you're doing the house, house chores. Okay. Instead of listening to some music, just get your tongue to be fluent with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the highest, the dependence of, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, the highest, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And when we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that everything is happening, is happening because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether this thing is good or bad. So when we are given so many things, then we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we have an affliction, when we have a test, then we have also to know that this test is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a, uh, a dear family member to us. We are suffering, okay? But this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's testing us. He is testing us how we are going to react in these situations. Are we accepting what he's doing? Are we rejecting it? When, when the woman was weeping badly on the grave of her son, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was passing by. But she was weeping and she was not looking around her. And when he said to her, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she said to him, anni fa innaka lam tusab bi Leave me alone. You, don't, you didn't have the same affliction that I was, uh, I was given. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went, kept, kept on walking. And later on, when they, when they told her, why did you say that to Sayyidina Muhammad? 
Why did you say that to the messenger of Allah? She said, was he the messenger of Allah who was ta talking to me? I didn't, I didn't realize that. So she rushed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she told him, Ya Rasulullah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry of what happened. I didn't recognize you. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Practicing patience is at the very, uh, at the very few minutes that the affliction happens. At the beginning of the, of the affliction and of course going on. So you have to be strong. You have to have strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will realize that. You will understand that everything happens, happens because of Allah's wish. So the highest the dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest the trust is. The highest the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And we have to keep in mind that all happens as per the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as per the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to guide us to, to, to have complete confidence in him. Because he promised. He promised. And whenever Allah promises, then he will fulfill his promise. I will give those who do not ask. So those who have complete dependence on, in, on me, I will, uh, I will give them more than what I give those who ask. So keep talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be sure that his giving is endless. It will never end. Keep getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep getting connected to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read it, recite it, understand it, and apply it. So this is our session for today. And until we meet next time, inshallah, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to whatever pleases him and to give us and to make us of those who keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we believe that, we believe in his words when he said, uh, in shakartum la'azidannakum, when you thank when you thank me, I will increase my giving. I will give and I will let you enjoy my bounties. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.